has issued a travel advisory for people living in New York, New Jersey and Connecticut, telling them to refrain from any non-essential domestic travel for two weeks. Governors were given full discretion over the new rollout and said the advisory is already practically in place. Totally consistent with everything we're doing. That's something that, uh, as I say, it's de facto happening already. With roughly roughly 42 percent of coronavirus deaths in the U.S. centered in New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo has extended his state's stay at home order through April 15th, stretching into major holidays like Easter and Passover. Coronavirus testing is expected to make a big leap forward this week as a new test will be released that can give results in as little as five minutes. The FDA gave the OK to Abbott Labs to roll out these tests, but it's based on technology which goes back to the early 2000s. King 5's Amy Marino talked with one of the men involved in that groundbreaking research. It could be a game changer in fighting the coronavirus, a test with results in just a matter of minutes. It should be a very sensitive and very rapid and accurate test. Dr. David Gallus with the Pacific Northwest Research Institute is quite familiar with the test, which identifies a portion of the virus's RNA in the sample. It's not really cutting edge technology. Gallus helped develop the concepts in a California research lab about 20 years ago. At the time, they were working with a grant to try and detect substances that might be used in bioterrorism, like anthrax. And funding new and novel and uh, things well before their time is is really important. Eventually, they sold the technology to another lab who was then taken over by Abbott, who is producing the rapid test and hopes to deliver 50,000 to medical providers every day. Results don't require a traditional lab setting. It uses these small boxes about the size of a toaster. They've already been testing for illnesses like the flu and strep throat for years. Now it will be able to give a positive result for coronavirus in about five minutes and a negative result in just under 15. Dr. Gala says beyond worried patients, it could be critical for researchers. To understand the way in which the virus spreads and to be able to model and understand what's going to happen, we need data and you need a lot of data. And the United States has been way behind on getting enough data. Dr. Gallus says it's gratifying to see the work become another tool in fighting the pandemic, but also highlights how important it is for society to support research before it's needed. They were particularly interested in this uh, bioterrorism issue, but it could have been funded from, uh, and it could have been supported for entirely other reasons, but it was really the basic work that was supported that really made the difference. Amy Marino, King 5 News. A live look now at the Clink, where the Army has begun the transformation of CenturyLink Field Events Center into a hospital. And that hospital will be used for treating patients who do not have coronavirus. But the goal of this hospital is to help take the pressure off the state's health care system as the number of coronavirus cases continues to rise. 300 soldiers will help create this fully functioning hospital with nearly 150 beds, surgeons, even an on-site pharmacy. Supplies are already on their way there. At an on-site news conference yesterday, the governor applauded the steps taken by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and FEMA to set this hospital up. We know, unfortunately, that this epidemic is going to grow to the furthest corners of the state of Washington. And we have to be and are committed to building that hospital in associated capacity in every single uh, part of the state. This year's new video of a military briefing just outside of CenturyLink today. And the 300 soldiers flew in from Colorado last week, and Mayor Jenny Durkin said that that team will be staying in and around Seattle while they're in town supporting local health professionals and we are so grateful for their help in this fight. Today, King County opened up a former Issaquah Hotel as a place for people who need somewhere to isolate or to quarantine themselves. The facility joins two other county sites, a former motel in Kent and modular units in North Seattle already being used for quarantine or isolation. Now we're told these facilities have 24 hour security and that the people there will be monitored by medical personnel. Meals will also be provided. With April 1st just days away, the two questions on lots of renters' minds are, do I have to pay rent and what if I can't? Well, there are some differences between the state's stance on rent 
in the city of Seattle. So let's break it down. In Seattle city limits, there's a 60 day moratorium on residential evictions, while the rest of the state sees a 30 day moratorium. But no matter where you are, your landlord cannot immediately evict you if you do not pay rent this month. In Seattle, landlords cannot charge late fees if you miss your payment, but the governor's order says nothing about stopping late fees elsewhere in Washington. So landlords could actually demand back pay once the order ends on April 17th. So something to keep in mind before the first. Schools may be closed right now because of the coronavirus outbreak, but beginning tomorrow, classes will be in session just virtually. So at-home learning for all Washington students begins tomorrow. School districts have been working with teachers for the past week to figure out how they'll be teaching their students remotely. And while this is uncharted territory, most teachers are optimistic that this can be done. A lot of anxiety, but also a lot of positivity. I think that uh, as a nation, teachers have just continued to rise to the occasion and provide what we need for our students. Online learning is just one of the tools being used here. Teachers have also put together packets for students who may not have internet at home. Private and public schools are closed through at least April 24th.